The Duderstadt Center was conceived, designed, and built during the 1990s to bridge the North Campus disciplines with a facility that would provide common access to new digital tools that might afford whole new fields of study. Two central areas, named Design Labs, were reserved for short-term, innovative projects that would illustrate new possibilities and spark new research. When the building first opened, the directors invited the Office of Instructional Technology to use one of the design labs to create a classroom of the future, one that would afford teaching and learning across disciplines. A few dedicated teachers came together to hammer out specifications. In the end, their recommendations were to provide sketching tools in abundance, to introduce new technology sparingly, and most importantly, to allow the users, call them inhabitants, to program the space and manage its contents. The two-year experiment supported new interdisciplinary courses, afforded new teaching strategies for old courses, and attracted small gangs of curious and highly creative students who enjoyed the opportunity to develop collaborative projects of their own in the flexible and socially active workspace. Well, when I first got here, uh, James Hilton, who uh, was an assistant provost, asked me to do some thinking about how we make this a more active space and engage the students more. So I thought, because digital media is emerging and changing so quickly, maybe we should give the people who are at the kind of the newest phase of development of new digital media technologies an opportunity to see what they can do. So flip the research model on its head. Let the youngest members of the academic community get engaged in doing some original research. The idea was to begin a program here, which we ended up naming GROX, the Grant Opportunities Collaborative Spaces, to take advantage of the room we now call Design Lab One as a place to host students who would self-organize. They'd find uh, a team of interdisciplinary collaborators and pose a question around something that they thought was interesting that would be uniquely dependent on digital media. <laughs> As the program moved along, students would ask us for things. And that, I think, was fundamental to creating this space, both as a learning and discovery space, a project space for students, and what eventually has become one of its more signature uses, which is as an instructional space. In January 2012, the library's use lab began a mixed method study to develop a formal, descriptive understanding of DL1 activities based on data. Through surveys, interviews, and observation, the researchers logged hundreds of repeating themes and identified three key dynamic elements, openness, connectedness, and evolution. I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I mean, I think that we were always very open to multiple outcomes, and maybe that's why it turned out so well. The original vision for this entire facility was to put enough resources into a single space that you could leverage the professional staff and the tools, the spaces and the equipment, the software, to enable new things to happen, particularly in the realm of creating with digital media. What we've been missing are spaces that give you the opportunity to work together in small groups, uh, move you know, quickly from small groups to large groups, uh, meet with your, your, your professor or your instructor, and have the tools you need that are typical of the tools you're going to use in your career when you leave the university. We need to make more of these kinds of spaces if we want students to begin working the way they're going to work when they leave here.